Good day, learners. So in previous years, we have learned how to work with functions and flow diagrams and spider diagrams, but we have only learned these skills, but how do we take these and apply them in mathematics? So today we will learn how to apply these and find the rules of the functions. So let's get down into it. So in completing these tables and uh, completing the flow diagrams, we have needed the rule or what we call the function every single time. But it happens sometimes that we are not given the function, but we are given the information. And so it is important for us to be able to use things going left, but also going to the right. Working backwards is just as important. So uh, before we start on this video, I just want to ask that if you've not seen the video on number patterns in finding the general term, it would help greatly to go watch that first before we start here. So, but for now, let's get into it. If we have a look in the, this following table, we have the inputs and all the outputs of a general function of a general rule but we've got no rule and so the answer is this time find the function find the function that describes these inputs and these outputs and so we can by using the same ideas as what we learned previously in number patterns describe this pattern and so we're going from position naught to one to two to three to four and what happens when our input goes from 0 to 4, what happens then with our outputs? Our output goes from 3 to 5. And so again, we can see a constant difference, very similar to our number patterns. And the constant difference this time is plus 2. And so we can start with the same method and say, well, the general term will be instead of the output previously was called our nth term, but this time our output is called y. And so now y will be equal to the constant difference, which is 2 in this case, multiplied by the input, by the position. And the input, where our position in this case, is x if we want to make it generalized. But we need to remind ourselves that we need to add or subtract something before we can say that this is finished. So let us look just at one of these examples. And it is often easiest just to look at the first case of information that is given. So at the first input and output. So if I know that my input with my constant difference of two, if my input is zero, what do I need to add or subtract? to get my output of three. That is my input and output, reminding ourselves there. And so two multiplied by naught is naught, and we need to add or subtract what to get to three? Well, we definitely need to add a three. So I will then add three. And so that is going to be our constant that we add to our general term and so this function suddenly becomes 2x plus 3. Before we move on let us test your work. Testing your work to make sure that you've made the correct decisions all along is very important and so let us test our work say if we have the third position where our input is 3 and our output is 9 and so 2 multiplied by 3 plus 3 well, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, and perfect. So our work here is done. This is the correct function for these inputs and these outputs. And so that is how we calculate our function when we have our values. So now go, you give it a try. And remember, always do your best and pray for the rest.